everyone. So my next video is on the topic P truck exercise, a huge amoebic test entry. And before we start my video, I want to request you if you like this video and if it is helpful to you and if it is useful to you, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Nitika Pharmacology Discussion. So now I'm going to discuss with you P truck exercise, a cute amoebic test entry with you. Now, case history is a 50-year-old male returns from a trip to Southeast Asia. He feels fine for five weeks but then begins to experience mild diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever and malaise. Fecal examination is positive for him, a paucity of neutrophils, an amoebic cyst or trophozoids. Choose an appropriate pee drug. Means a Person, a male is there, 50 year old male, and he's been suffering from diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever, and malaise. And there was presence of blood in the stool, and there was presence of amoebic cyst and uh, a torphosoids in the fecal examination. So now, what is the uh, this is the acute descent, amoebic dysentery case because of the presence of heme and torphosoids in the stool, and diarrhea, and abdominal pain, and fever. Now, acute nebic dysentery is a protozoal infection caused by the ingestion of a mebic cyst of Antimipa histolytica in the contaminated, in the contaminated food or water. Means there is ingestion of a cyst from the contaminated food and water from the affected patient uh, of the Antimipa histolytica. And this is the protozoal infection. And it is characterized by presence of blood as mucus in the stools. There is presence of blood and mucus in the stools and this is a known case of acute amoebic dysentery. Now specify the therapeutic objective we can treat the diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever, that's the signs and symptoms are treated. We can eradicate the disease and we can prevent the transmission of disease. Like in our body there is a trophozoid presence in the amoebic dysentery. These trophozoids, these when uh, attacked intestinal mucosa, the in the intestinal lumen, the trophozoids are present. When they attack the intestinal mucosa, these trophozoids can lead to ulcers in the intestinal mucosa, which can lead to uh, amoebic dysentery. So there is blood and mucus in these tools. And other thing is the trophozoids these can invade the intestinal lumen and get converted to cyst. And when they get converted to cyst, this cyst can pass from the intestinal lumen into to the outside. So there is carrier status there. It is transmission of the trophozoids to the cyst and the disease, these transmit the disease from the carrier human being to the other normal infected normal patient means there's also carrier stage also and there's also the disease prevalence uh, is there by the trophozoids which form the ulcers in the intestinal mucosa. So these are the further complications can be treated. Now what is inventory of the groups is nitrometazole, group of the drugs like metronidazole, tinidazole, signetazole, signetazole, oridazole, alkaloids like imagine dihydromethane, Amides like deloxanitrate, H hydroxyquinolones like hydrochlorohydroxyquin, hydrochloro, hydrohydroxyquin, and antibiotics like tetracycline and paramomycin. These are the drugs used in the treatment of acute amoebic dysentery, the inventory of groups. Now, how can we choose the effective group? Is this nitromidazole group of the drug is the most efficacious group and uh, it releases the it is the broad spectrum uh, group, anti nitrometazole antibiotic. This is the broad spectrum group. And this is effective against the protozoal infection also, as well as the anaerobic bacteria also. And these nitrometazole group of drugs, these are released in nitric oxide radical uh, in the uh, intestinal mucosa. And they release the free radicals, which kill the cytotoxic free radicals, which kill the protozoa in the intestinal mucosa. These are much more safer. Only few side effects can be there like GI disturbances or there can be metallic taste and uh, or a disulfiram like reaction can occur in some cases, but the, these are more safer. These are more suitable drugs also. 
these are orally given and these are more suitable and cost wise also these are very less costly alkaloid group of drugs these are less safer they can cause very serious side effects uh, sometimes and these are efficacious but these are less safer and less suitable as compared to nitrometazole group of drugs price wise these are uh, beneficial the last two group of drugs like amides, hydroxyquinolones, and antibiotics, these are effective in the chronic cases. Is in chronic uh, uh, big dysentery, in chronic cases, we can give these patients in the carrier state or in chronic diseases of the immune acute of the immune dysentery. So these are less effective as compared to nitrometazoles and alkaloids. So we can say that. Nitrometazole group of drugs are the effective P group, P group, P drug group. Now, safety, tolerability, and efficacy is more as compared to alkaloids, amides, hydroxyquinolones, and antibiotics. So, P drug will be from nitrometazole group of the drugs. And now, how we choose the P drug is all the four first four drugs like metronidazole, tinidazole, secnidazole, and ornidazole. These are similar in efficacy, safety, and suitability, but cetronidazole is more safer and more suitable. Efficacy-wise, it is similar, but it is more safer and more suitable, but it is very costly, about five to six times more costly than the metronidazole, which is the least costly drug. So, the P drug will be metronidazole because its, its price is seven rupees about, and the other the drugs, these are more costly, so these are not the P drugs. But if the metronidazole group has to be avoided in some cases, then we use the second drug, which is cetronidazole, which can be given to treat the acute mimic dysentery. So, some cases, cetronidazole is preferred if metronidazole is not effective. So there is not much difference in efficacy and safety of the five group of the uh, five drugs in the nitronidazole group. Metronidazole is the cheapest activation, and along with metronidazole, we can give the luminal amibicide, that is diloxanide furate, to prevent the carrier stage. That is, amibic cyst has to be killed by the diloxanide furate, which is the luminal amibicide. So active substance, dosage form, that is metronidazole, oral tablet has to be given. Dosage schedule is 400 milligram three times a day. We can give this drug. Duration, duration of treatment for acute intestinal MBS is usually five to seven days with 400 milligram metronidazole. And we can give the, for the five to seven days, we can give this drug, 400 milligram metronidazole, three times a day is the drug which you can give. So the PE drug is 400 milligram three times a day for five to seven days, followed by tablet deluxe curate, which will prevent the carrier stage. That is 500 milligram TEID for 10 days. Means first for, for treating acute mimic dysentery, then to prevent the carrier stage, we give deluxe curate 500 milligram TEID for 10 days. This is the proper prescription to for the treatment of acute mimic dysentery. So that's all for my P drug exercise on acute mimic dysentery. I hope you like this video. And if you like this video and if this is useful to you, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, the Dr. Nitika Pharmacology Discussion. Thank you. Be happy, be healthy, be blessed. Work smart, work hard. Happy learning. Thank you. Be healthy, be wealthy. Thank you.